Uh, Ashwin, thank you so much for joining us for the interview. Uh, just tell us, uh, according to you, what are the major problems in current Indian cities? Broadly, cities are underrepresented politically and underfinanced economically. People are moving from villages to cities, but the votes are not moving from villages to cities. Parliament and the state legislature are still dominated by votes from rural areas, even though people are moving to cities. So we don't have a system of continuously adjusting the seats in parliament and the legislature to account for where people are. So as a result, urban areas are underrepresented. The second thing is that there isn't enough power in the cities because national government and state government hold most of the money and most of the power. And they don't devolve this to the local government. So in many cities you will find that transport services or electricity services or water supply services are not provided or even police services across India. These are not provided by the city government. Whereas around the world these things are provided by city governments. In India these things are still provided by state governments by and large. Cities have very little to do to shape their own destiny. And they get a very small share of the taxes for themselves. Except in Maharashtra and Gujarat, most parts of the country, the cities don't have enough to even begin to sustain themselves. So as a result of not having power, not having money, and not having political clout, you're basically always running to catch up to the problems. Right. So uh, you had this idea called, uh, you know, a publicly managed city. Yeah. So how will we t it, uh, actually address some of the problems that we have in Indian cities? Okay, there are two ways of thinking about it. Cities are very complex and you, we are always looking for a solution. We go out there and say, okay, this is the problem, how can it be solved? How can it be solved in this city? How can the water problem be solved in this city? How can the uh, transport problem be solved in that city and so on and so forth? At one level that is important, it's the job of government. But there are also many, many problems that the department simply cannot solve. They don't have the staff, they don't have the training, they don't have the money to solve all this. So my answer is to say, in other, rather than trying to solve problems, try to increase the number of problem solving people. right? And this is a different way of thinking about the same problem. The goal is still to solve the problem. But instead of directly solving the problem, you say, I'm going to try to increase the number of problem solving people. And how do you do that? The easiest way to do that is to turn members of the public itself into problem solving people. Can you empower citizens to be able to solve problems in their own area? And there are constitutional mechanisms for doing this. You can make the ward committees stronger if you want to. But you can also say that I'm going to allow citizens to self-manage certain things. Public spaces, for example, can be managed by local communities in that area. Communication of good consumer behavior can be made the responsibility of private groups. Uh, adoption of responsible practices can be pioneered through citizens groups. So we do a lot of these things in Bangalore, for example, lake revival and management is left to citizens. Segregation of garbage and you know, new practices in waste management is pioneered by citizens. So there are good models for how these things can be done. And what you are trying to do there is to say it's not just the mayor, the commissioner and the corporators and the engineers who are supposed to solve the problem. Everybody can actually be part of solving problems and we will actually learn more from each other and replicate these things much faster if we make more people into problem solvers. So this is the idea. The, there's, a, there's a financial component also, which is to say, if today your city government comes and says, well, you need to pay more property tax, most citizens will respond by saying, Are, the property tax that I'm already paying is not being used properly. Why the hell should I give you more money? So I'm saying, let's come up with some other thing. Gov you don't want to give your local government more money, but more money is needed in order to solve the problems. Therefore, the, what is the alternative? You spend the money yourself. You don't give to government, but you spend it yourself. So if you allow citizens to self-improve their areas, they can spend their own money or even corporate CSR money. Corporate CSR money is a perfect fit for this. Take company CSR and apply it to local civic problems. The companies are happy that civic things are improving in the neighborhoods where they live, uh, where they work. Uh, the citizens are happy that things are getting changed and they are also becoming part of the system rather than standing outside the system. It's a perfect marriage to take corporate CSR money and apply it through citizen action for local civic improvement. 
Right. So effectively what you are uh, saying is we need collaborative uh, approaches to address Correct. the uh, planning. Correct. So can you just uh, tell us about your uh, you know, involvement with uh, the Bangalore Transport uh, which actually created the tra uh, traffic management center which has been one of the most, uh, you know, one, or I would say one of the best practices that everybody talks about. Can you just tell us how you could, how you, you were able to kind of build that trust and other collaboration with that department and then could, uh, were, able, were you able to implement that scheme? So you have to look at it like this. We always think of the government as either the bad guys or the guys who are not doing their job or something like that. You have to understand why they are not doing their job too. And it's not always because they are not interested in doing the job. They can't do the job in many cases. So you expect the traffic police to manage the traffic. But he can't even see the problem. He can't see where the traffic is congested and where it is not congested. And the reason he can't see it is in most cities they have a field force constables at various junctions. Each constable knows what is going on at his junction, but he doesn't know what is causing the problem at his junction, which nearby junction is causing the problem. And there is no single command center from which you can see the problem altogether. So this was the situation when I started getting into this problem seven or eight years ago. So I said, we'll do one thing. We'll create a single command center from which the problem can be seen by leaders in the traffic police, either zonal leaders or city leaders, and then they can do whatever it is that they want. Not only that, why should only the traffic police see the, the traffic problem? The bus company should be able to see the traffic problem. And not only that, if the bus is stuck in traffic, it's important for the bus company to know that and respond to that. But the fact that the bus is stuck in traffic is useful information to the traffic department also. So can you make these departments work with the data to learn and benefit each other? So we built this thing called the Bangalore Transport Information System. In government, it is nobody's job to integrate. That is, the traffic police will do their job, the BMTC will do its job, the transport department will do its job, the metro will do its job. Whose job is it to present an integrated picture of mobility in the city? There is no department for that. And as citizens, we have to accept that whenever there is no government department to do something, the implication is that job belongs to us. Because we created the government. If we did not create an integrating organization, that's our fault. We must go and do that work, therefore. So we built the Bangalore Transport Information System. And quickly every department began to realize that it would be useful to each other. So the bus company is interested in certain things. The hospital ambulances are interested in certain things. The police are interested in certain things. You talk to every one of them and work on doing the pieces that are of interest to them. The carpool companies are interested. Uh, the taxi services are interested. So everybody becomes interested in this common outcome. Somebody has to own and drive that outcome. But if you do that, many people will come forward to work with you on it. The traffic control center is an interesting thing. The remarkable thing about the traffic control center is not that it got built. Once they began to see the power of data, they also want to build it. But unlike anywhere in the world, we decided to build the traffic control center not by outsourcing it, but by doing it ourselves. That is, the traffic police itself would build the traffic control room. And in the beginning, everybody said ordinary traffic policemen, DCP, ACP, even the police commissioner, inko kya aata hai? What do they know about technology and how can they build a traffic control center? And I said, okay, I accept that there are limitations over there, but let us ask the question, who knows the answers to this question? So I said, huh, there are these IT companies, you know, these Infosys, Wipro, Istaraki company, they know the answer. Or there are digital companies like Cisco, Un uh, Juniper, they know some part of the answer. There are Bosch and Siemens can make sensors and they know part of the answer. I said, TK, we'll do one thing. We'll ask all of them to help. The government's normal inclination is to not ask anybody for help, but to try to contract the problem. They will put out a contract and say, this is what we want to build. Some various people will bid for it and some of them will be selected to build it. The difficulty with that is that it doesn't improve your department's internal capacity. It just is a kind of outsourcing in some way. So I said, let's do one thing. Let us ask people to help wherever we need help. And I will also help. I mean, I'm also from the private sector. I, you may not understand all of the problems. I understand many of the problems. I have a PhD in remote sensing. I will help you with sensing and data collection and all that. And I have a small technology lab which will do things for free. So now let's try to build it as though we were not contracting it, but as though we are building it within the department. 
And when we asked many of the companies out there to help, you know, the Cisco's, the Wipro's, the Mind Trees, they all helped voluntarily because they also see this is a good thing to do. So Mind Tree helped to build some storage environment, Cisco helped to build some switching environment, somebody else, Bosch, helped to understand the camera and its environment, and they all did it for free. Not because they were being paid to do it, not because they were being pressured to do it, but because of two things. They decided it's a good thing to do, and that if it is done and shown to be done in one city, more cities will anyway buy these technologies. Therefore, it's not a bad idea to create that market. So the, the reason many police commissioners even today come to Bangalore to see what we did is that this stuff, which normally is done as a contract and outsourced, was done by the department itself. Equally impressive, I would say, is what BMTC did with the bus. In the bus also, when we moved away from destination system to direction oriented system, we took the view that we can get all the advice that we want from outside, but it has to be done by BMTC. And that means their own people must understand the problem and solve the problem in that way. And one thing I have to give credit for is that if you expect government departments to do a really good job, many individuals in those departments will rise to the occasion and actually do a good job. So there is a self-fulfilling sort of thing in government today. If we believe that government is bad and government people are lazy, sometimes the fact that we believe it becomes the reason that they end up like that. If on the other hand we believe that government has potential to improve itself, and even in government there are many people who want to do the right thing, then you can build that culture in which they do the right thing, because now somebody believes them, somebody wants to work with them. Too many of the people who are proposing solutions in our country don't want to work alongside government officials to make it happen. If you change that one thing, some dramatic outcomes can happen.